Hands Up Taiwan. I'm Louise Watt with news from here in Taiwan and around the world. Taiwan's vice president has landed in San Francisco after meeting several international figures in Paraguay. It's a trip that's drawn harsh criticism from China. Leslie Liao brings us this report. Taiwan's Vice President Lai Qingde has met with local Taiwanese people in San Francisco at a dinner. He's here in California as part of a second stopover in the United States before he heads back to Taiwan. Now, you might remember he was in New York before traveling to Paraguay to attend the South American country's presidential inauguration. Lai posted pictures of himself meeting U.S. Interior Secretary Deb Holland, King Felipe IV of Spain, and Brazilian President Luis Inácio Lula da Silva in Paraguay, who were there for the same event. Upon his arrival here in San Francisco, Lai was met with both supporters and protesters. The protesters were advocating China's position that Taiwan is part of Chinese sovereign territory. Now, China doesn't like it when Taiwanese officials meet with U.S. officials. You might remember that when President Tsai Ing-wen came to California in early April and met with U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, China launched extensive military drills around Taiwan in protest. But Lai says that this time around, if China reacts aggressively to his trip, that would constitute election interference. And that's because Taiwan is about to vote for a new president in January, and Lai is a candidate in that race. Lai isn't supposed to be campaigning on this trip, but during his dinner, he did hint at things he might do if he were to win the presidency. At the dinner here in San Francisco, Lai met with Janet Napolitano, who is Homeland Security Secretary under President Barack Obama. He also met with the mayor of Phoenix, Kate Gallagher, who was in Taiwan last month to pitch investment ideas between Taiwan and Phoenix. Also here is Lauren Rosenberger, who is the chair of the American Institute in Taiwan, the unofficial embassy of Washington in Taipei. So far, Lai hasn't had as many high-profile meetings as Tsai Ing-wen when she came to the U.S., but it might be the case where we might learn about them later. Now, Lai is in San Francisco for only about nine hours. He landed at around 4 p.m., and he's scheduled to leave in a few hours at 1 a.m. So if there's anybody he needs to meet or anything he needs to accomplish outside of the banquet, he won't have much time to do it. Eason Sun and Leslie Liao in Burlingame, California for Taiwan Plus. For more on China's possible reaction to Lai's visit, I spoke to Wen Ti Sung, a non-resident fellow at DC think tank Atlantic Council Global China Hub. He specializes in U.S.-China-Taiwan relations. When President Tsai went to the U.S. in April and met with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, Beijing responded with three days of live fire exercises. But this time with the vice president, we're expecting China's response to be more muted. Why is that? I think Beijing is in the process of trying to repair their uh, reputation as a diplomatic actor. And one important aspect of that is to show proportionality in their response. So I think like the Taiwan's vice president during this U.S. trip has made a lot of efforts to keep his trip so far as low key as he can reasonably uh, keep it. Which is to say that if Beijing continues to use escalatory overreaction towards this relatively low key Lai Qingde visit, then when Beijing treats both super provocative visits and low key visits all in the same overreacting ways, Beijing will lose the ability to incentivize anyone else in the future to be low-key or to soften or otherwise to take Beijing's preferences into consideration. Would a strong Chinese military reaction help or hinder Lai's presidential chances? I think Beijing has learned from past experience from Taiwan's 2000 and 2004 elections especially, that each time China uses fire and fury and military escalation before Taiwan's elections, they tend to generate electoral backlash that actually end up hurting Beijing and hurting the, the candidates uh, who Beijing might have preferred more.
So I think there's reason, therefore, to expect that if Beijing uses forward this time again, well, at least use serious military escalation this time around, it may actually end up helping Lai Qingde and the DPP a little bit more than it hurts them. Is there any chance a strong military reaction from China could actually help Lai's opponents, though? Because they've very much made part of their platform um, the idea that they would manage relations with China much better than Lai. Yeah, I think on that, that again comes down to the perceived credibility of China's military threat. And what we know is that China military threat has been a constant fixture. And each time that Beijing doesn't follow through, it hurts uh, the efficacy of China's military threat. And that also translates into electoral implications in Taiwan as well, which is why at this juncture, I think a military escalation from China will likely generate a little bit more national backlash in Taiwan in ways that help DPP rather than instilling fear in ways that uh, perhaps benefit more dovish candidacies. That was Wen Ti Sung of the Atlantic Council Global China Hub. The presidential candidate for the Kuomintang says he will unite the opposition against Taiwan's ruling party. This is what Hou Youyi told reporters. Ho was responding to comments from Foxconn founder Terry Gore that the KMT doesn't want to join forces with him to win the election. Rumors have been swirling that Gore will run as an independent, but he's yet to throw his hat into the ring. The most recent election poll shows Ho gaining strength over third-party candidate Ke Wenzhe. Were Terry Gore to enter the race, both Ho and Ke's support would drop slightly. Support for the ruling party's candidate Lai Qingde remains steady at around 35 percent. Taiwan's military has test-fired a classified missile. Though part of a week of scheduled tests, this weapon has many people talking about what it could do. Jaime Ocon explains. Taiwan's military firing off an unspecified weapon early on Wednesday. Many say it was the Xiongfeng 2E, one of Taiwan's few cruise missiles. It's a counter-strike weapon and can hit targets far outside Taiwan's borders. And while not much is known about this specific missile, Lawmakers from Taiwan's ruling Democratic Progressive Party, or DPP, are pushing for more of these kinds of capabilities. Taiwan's largest weapons maker has been testing missiles over the last week in the country's south. But tests of this missile are rare, since Taiwan usually prioritizes defensive weapons. The manufacturer says the missile has a range of 600 kilometers, but it's also working on a version that could strike targets up to 1,200 kilometers away. Faced with threats from China, Taiwan could hit military targets in places like Shanghai, Nanjing, and Guangzhou. They could complicate the opponents' war preparation and uh, dis disrupt their, their op operations and also uh, bring, potentially bring some damage to their own territory and their own infrastructure. The missile could be used to destroy the bases China would use in an attack on Taiwan. But some analysts say these types of missiles may not pose a significant threat to China's forces. The opponent probably will have very comprehensive airborne early radar systems. They could also detect it early on. So capability-wise, I would say it is still a, a quite limited counter-strike capability. But just as that, it's, nevertheless, it still has the potential to disrupt the opponent's uh, military operations. Analysts warn that Taiwan's military capabilities are dwarfed in both quantity and quality by China's. That's why many want Taiwan to focus on developing systems aimed at defense rather than retaliation. Justin Wu and Hamio Khan for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan's state-owned energy company, CPC, has acquired mining rights to an offshore oil and gas field in southwestern Australia. 
The deal is expected to be worth 146 million US dollars for a 10% stake in the venture operated by Australia's Carnarvon Energy. Taiwan relies on fossil fuel imports for nearly all its energy production. It's been trying to get more energy from renewable sources, but it's also diversifying where it gets its fuel from to increase energy security. Officials are investigating how a high-profile criminal was put in a minimum security prison. The authorities blame a paperwork mistake, but Taiwan's anti-corruption agency is among those questioning this explanation. John Van Trieste reports. Convicted criminal Ibo Hong faces the press. He's one of dozens doing time for the fatal beating of a Taipei police officer in 2014 by a mob with alleged gang connections. A prior drug conviction means Yi should have been in a prison with tight security. But until July, he was in a minimum security jail, and until he broke the rules, was also allowed home visits. Officials now want to know how this happened. Taiwan's Agency Against Corruption has launched a probe to find answers. The Agency of Corrections, in charge of Taiwan's prison service, says it was a bureaucratic slip-up where agents overlooked his drug conviction. But E's application to be moved to a minimum security facility needed higher up approval from the Agency of Corrections itself, leading some observers of the justice system to question whether it really was a mistake. The Agency of Corrections has handed out administrative punishments over the incident, but the details of what exactly happened won't come to light until the probe finishes its work. Joseph Wu and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. A rural Taiwan county has a big problem with trash. Bing Wang reports. 200,000 metric tons of garbage sit on top of this landfill in Nantou County in central Taiwan. Nantou used to send some of its excess trash to Taizong, Jiayi, Miaoli, and Kaohsiung to be incinerated, but they decided to halt the burning in 2015. Without any way to remove the waste, Nanto asked the Environmental Protection Administration to find other places with incinerators. It then turned to Taidong earlier this year. The Eastern County had just restarted an incinerator that had long stood dormant. It was a move that stirred controversy. Residents complained about the pollution it would cause. At the time, Taidong's government assured them it would monitor the operation and would not burn garbage from other counties and cities. But the Taiwan Environmental Protection Agency says the burning will continue even with the disapproval of some residents. Environmental groups in Taidong continue to fight against the burning of waste in their county. They also fear that once Nanto's waste comes to Taidong, other cities and counties could start doing the same. Klein Wong and Bing Wong for Taiwan Plus. A hole in the engine room of a container ship which sank off Taiwan has been patched up. Port authorities in Taiwan's southern city of Kaohsiung say they'll soon finish cleaning up oil that was spilling from the wreck. The Palau-flagged vessel Angel sank in mid-July, while anchored about five kilometers from shore. All 20 crew made it off the boat safely, but more than 1,000 empty containers fell into the sea, and many washed up on Taiwan's shores. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. Finally today, we leave you with images of misty Taroko Gorge in the mountains of Hualien County in Taiwan's east. I'm Louise Watt. Take care and we'll see you next time.